Recovery Record, um, in essence, provides a SaaS model to clinicians, so that's like a monthly subscription to the service um, for practitioners in private practice to offer recovery record to their patients. Um, and there, there are buckets based on how many patients they will be using recovery record with. So someone might start a, start a plan with four patients and then move up to a basic or a professional. Um, and the first patient is free. So that's our SaaS model, but um, our primary um, revenue model is through enterprise sales. Um, so working with large, um, both integrated and um, well, non-integrated healthcare providers and specialty franchise clinics in eating disorders, um, we provide our full software suite, including the patient applications, the clinician interface, it, and the enterprise level dashboard. Um, and we package that, and that's an annual license fee on a per seat basis, so the number of based on the number of clinicians in that particular um, healthcare provider. We really like this model because it means that um, we're getting leadership buy-in and that's important because it means that it gives us the opportunity to provide um, more personalised training for clinicians um, and if they have top-down support which means that they can freely use the technology without having to worry about the cost. Um, and we also like it because there's no burden to patients. So clinicians, have, we've taken away any barrier a clinician will have to recommending a patient use our app. So a lot of um, patient use comes through referral. Um, so I think it's, and it's very validating. I think having um, large providers allows us also to do um, case studies with them um, through a pilot period to develop our evidence base um, for the technology in a number of different healthcare um, settings um, and, and treatment contexts. So it's, it's good for business. There are two big risks to the revenue approach that we've taken. Um, one is that you have um, a smaller number of customers and therefore um, are more exposed um, and if one of them stops becoming a customer or has a problem then you know, your revenue can drastically change very quickly on your forecast, so that's a problem. Um, and the second big risk with our approach is that um, the problem of interoperability um, and multiple competing um, systems for the vying for the same customers. So, um, if for example, we're looking to expand beyond eating disorders to other mental health conditions and there are a number of competition on that horizon and so um, we need to act quickly to gain market share before those incumbent systems are adopted by those provider groups um, because the cost of converting to a new technology would make the sale a lot harder. Um, so it's a competitive risk I think um, in that there's only so many technologies that can be adopt adopted by each healthcare provider. The hard part of um, selling to hospitals is, and probably not a surprise, is time. So it does take quite a long time. There is a sales cycle, um, which we've identified as being six to 12 months um, for a kind of medium-sized clinic and around two years um, for a large healthcare provider institution. So um, for this reason, diversifying our revenue streams and having a SaaS model for private practitioners as well as an enterprise model makes sense. It supplements um, you know, our revenue while we're waiting for those deals to close.